So the iPhone SE 3 is one of those iPhones that's going to be coming out sooner than later, probably within the next couple of months, and this is probably going to be the next iPhone we should be receiving from Apple. Now there are these rumors basically coming about that's saying that this next iPhone, the iPhone 5G SC, whatever they're going to call it, is actually probably going to be one of the best selling phones from Apple, at least for a while. And actually what's even crazier is that some analysts are saying that this could, you know, potentially turn about a billion Android users into the iPhone ecosystem. Now, I don't know if that's even remotely accurate, but based on some of these people, I mean, this apparently from, you know, 9to5Mac, shout out to them, this piece from the article in this JP Morgan's analysis, according to Reuters, the iPhone SE 3 has the potential to learn nearly 1.4 billion people to low to mid end Android phones and about 300 million older iPhone model users. So if that ends up being true, this is going to be a crazy big upgrade that a lot of people are going to be upgrading to. Now they also go on to say that the average range is about 269 to 399 for the 5G iPhone SE. I'm going to tell you it's definitely going for 399. I don't think it's going to go for less than that because Apple knows a bunch of people are going to be interested in this device. So that is crazy in and of itself. But the even crazier thing is that in my opinion, this SC iPhone is not going to be that big refresh for the SC lineup. Apparently, you know, a lot of people, including Ming Chi Ko, are stating that the 2023 iPhone, the iPhone SE 3 Plus, or whatever they're going to call it, that is going to be that bigger upgrade. In this case, the iPhone SE 3, the one that's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks, is going to be maintaining almost exactly the same type of setup as that original iPhone SE. It's going to have that same type of setup as the iPhone SE 2, so it's the current generation. It's going to still have that 4.7 inch to display, it's probably going to go from that A14 chip that has inside of it now, it's probably going to go from that A13 chip possibly to an A15 chip, we don't know. I'm going to assume it's going to be that A15 because that's kind of how the iPhone SE 2 was at that time. But the biggest feature is it's going to support 5G, which I think is cool, but that battery life is really going to be the bigger issue for this specific device. I really hope it doesn't end up being something where, you know, Apple chooses 5G over battery life. You still have the ability to turn it off, which is really cool, but I would love to see a battery increase of some sort. And I do think that's one of the last things Apple can do, you know, how much more better can they improve on this type of body style in the same form factor? It's already a super thin phone. You can't really do much. The next thing Apple can do possibly is to bring back that older iPhone XR body style and increase that battery size like crazy and then pretty much go on from there. So in terms of this, I think this is going to be a crazy big iPhone. A ton of people are going to be interested in it and I cannot wait for this iPhone to come out. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.